welcome back to Mind Pump. In this episode, we talk about how to choose the best protein powder for you. By the way, if you have digestive issues, that's probably not the one. Also, later in the episode, we talk about how your penis shape can actually indicate your risk for cancer. Then we talk about the ages you peak at everything. When are you at your strongest? When are you at your smartest? You may be surprised. In the second half of the show, we coach four live callers on questions such as, how can I become more explosive with my lifts? I have a body part that just doesn't respond. What can I do to develop a connection with that muscle? And also, is 15 minutes a day really enough time to build muscle? Well, we reveal the truth on that one. Speaking of time, we are posting a lot of new clips every day on our Mind Pump Clips channel. These are short clips from the show that are easy to share, easy to consume. Again, Mind Pump Clips, go over there and subscribe. All right, enjoy the show. There's so many protein powders to choose from. How do you know which one's the best? Here's the most important factor, digestibility. How easily can you digest the protein? It's more important than the essential amino acids or the branched amino acids that are found in the protein. How much you can digest or how well you digest the protein by far will tell you the most about whether or not you should pick that protein or not. Okay, so we we work with at least three companies that yeah. come off the top of my head that all have protein powders now personally since you have the tummy issues mm. what it, what it, in your or, order best to worst and why it okay so should say worst they're all good me, we wouldn't work with them if they weren't good so let's start with you mean that. for me personally yeah you personally you personally if you go my number one go-to of uh, the protein powders is this one my number two and number three well for that reason. okay i'll tell you what hands down by far the easiest protein for me to digest is the uh paleo valley bone broth Protein. You've been By saying far. that. Has any has anyone else used it yet or tried I, it yet? Doug no, has. No, I still haven't yeah. tried it. Oh, what do you think? I love it. Okay. First I, of all, I trust I first thing. of all, this is not bullshit. Okay. One hundred percent. Their yeah. chocolate is the this is one I dare you to test this out. I'm not making this bro, shit you up. Sell, if you sell it too hard, no, bro. no, I'm telling you right now, it's the best tasting under chocolate. Promise, under promise. No, no, it's delivered. really good. He's Thank you. It's really good. Bad. Bro, like that? I mean, like you I mix it with some macadamia milk. And shake it up. I mean, it's like drinking chocolate milk. And like, they no. put a little, little bit of salt in it, too. It's like it's really chocolate. Good. It tastes like chocolate donuts. Oh, yeah, exactly. That's the word that came to my mind Bro, when I ate it. it's better than whey. It's better than any protein I've ever had in my life. What? All right. Okay. okay, okay. okay. I'm okay. telling you. Whoa. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, look. I mean, we're the whey guys over here. No, <laughs> okay, no, no. Like, now, here's the deal. I'm I not, can handle it. <laughs> here's the deal. You guys know me. Taste, I could care less because I'll just take a supplement for the hell of it. So yeah. it surprised me. Well, that's why we don't really trust your opinion. But I, the fact that Doug is is I co had him try co it. Doug's co signing. That means something. Andrew, have you had it? Did you try it, Andrew? Not the chocolate. Okay. No, the chocolate. No, unflavored yeah, is unflavored. It tastes chocolate neutral. Chocolate donut? My I goodness. swear to God, I had Kyle try it. He's one of our editors. And Kyle was like, yeah, you're right, bro. Yeah. I'm saying that for the show. Yeah, the <laughs> 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 Adam thinks it's just us. Here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah. anyway, so, okay. So forget taste. I know people are all about taste. Fine. This tastes amazing. They have one that's unflavored. I like that one too, but just because I like it to be basic and plain. Yeah. Super neutral. But here's the deal, and this is why this is such an important thing to understand. So it's definitely true that gram per gram, there are some proteins that are better than other proteins. And it's largely due to the essential amino acid and branched chain amino acid content, in particular leucine. Right? So essential amino acids are, so if proteins are made up of amino acids, that's the breakup. Essential amino acids are amino acids that your body or the human body cannot make. You must consume these amino acids from food or from, let's say, a protein powder or something like that. So that is, a, is the most important part of proteins because otherwise you could synthesize your own proteins or your own amino acids. Uh, among those essential amino acids are the branched amino acids, uh, leucine, isoleucine, and valine. And of those, leucine seems to trigger muscle growth the most. So they'll rank protein powders, they'll rank foods, and the leucine content will often tell you this is a better or worse protein for building muscle. Hmm. This is all true, okay? All true. But here's the, this is the rub with all of that. If you can digest another protein exceptionally well, well then 70 grams of bone broth protein is gonna be better than 40 grams of whey protein. So although the whey protein, for example, not to knock whey protein, but I know whey, a lot of people have digestive issues because it's da dairy, and dairy is one of the common, most common, I guess, intolerances even allergens uh, that are out there. Uh, whey is very high in branched amino acids, very high in essential amino acids. 
and bone broth uh, or collagen, not so much. But if you can digest, like me, I could digest bone broth protein like water. Like literally, I could pound a 100 gram shake, which I do, and nothing. It mm. affects my digestion like I drink water. So I'm going to reap the benefits of it because the protein content's so high. So this is something to consider because I know people, one of the comments that people will have when they go on a high protein diet or take a lot of protein powders is what? Yeah. My fart Farting, smell. Farting, your stool, yeah. Gas. Yeah. So those are all signs that you're not assimilating mm. the protein very well, meaning you could have the best protein powder in the world on paper, but if it's causing digestive issues, you're not assimilating all of it properly and you're probably causing maybe some inflammation, which can cause cortisol spikes, can cause all kinds of things that are not uh, conducive is to building muscle. Is this lower uh, of grams of protein per serving or is it pretty high still? No, it's it's still, it's it's very similar, right? So like one scoop is like, I think, to like yeah, it's like, it's like 15 yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, grams of protein. <clears throat> um, collagen or bone broth, which is high in collagen, is high in like other amino acids that are good for connective tissue, skin, hair. So, okay, would be really interesting. Have you seen any studies which would be really neat to see is somebody who does have a dairy intolerance like you who takes in, say, you know, 40 grams of whey and then 40 grams of bone broth. And then what ends up happening afterwards? Is there anything out there? I mean, obviously it makes kind of common sense, right? If you are farting and shitting yourself when you do anything that's dairy related. It doesn't even have to be severe. It could just be gas. Like people accept protein powder gas like it's supposed to happen. Yeah, it's like par for the course. I can't I can't help but remember the time <laughs> when we were time. with our boy I, Craig, dude. It's just, I already knew he like, crushed hey, the room. Like, hey, bro, you know, he's a really smart guy too. And I'm just like, hey, that's not fucking normal, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like paint is not supposed to peel like, off of walls like when you fucking fart. the entire in a, box. Like, yes. No, and, and, and people have no idea that, that your digestion plays such a huge role in your ability to build muscle, burn body fat, um, and just your health. You know, you can't, if you can't, look, a rock is full of minerals, but it's it's useless if you swallow a rock because you can't assimilate. Right. So, and I'm using an extreme example, but if your protein powder, if you have a protein powder where you're like, ooh, I could do one serving, but if I do more than one serving, I start to get gas or I start to feel digestive issues. I would I would encourage you to seek something else out. Now here's the, the the beauty of bone broth protein or what's what it's high in, which is collagen. This is actually a protein that's encouraged for people with gut issues. If you look at gut health protocols, people have digestive issues. One of the foods that they recommend is bone broth or collagen because they are high in the amino acids that help repair and build the gut. Not to mention collagen again, which is very high in bone broth protein is one of the most satiating proteins you can have. So if you're dieting, this kind of protein will keep you full longer. Now this is a known fact, whey is the least satiety producing. So whey might be good for someone who's trying to bulk and trying to stuff calories and they're having a tough time. Whereas collagen or bone broth may be great uh, for the opposite. Now, and, and the reason why I'm saying this is I know in the past I've talked about the superiority of, of egg protein and, and animal protein and Way and all that stuff, which is all true. But again, the fact that I can take so much bone broth, I can, I can literally take 30 grams with every meal. A fire hose. And notice notice broth. no no negatives whatsoever. And instead, what I get are the positives of having a super high protein diet. So it's an important thing to consider. And I know that people have digestive issues, or, or I should I say, digestive issues with protein powders are so common that we think it's normal. I did. I thought it was. Everybody's like, oh, I got those protein farts because I'm taking a protein powder or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that's that. But I am going to have you try the chocolate. Well, now, and now you that, could, and now I know you'll Doug's, be honest. Now that Doug's co-signed. I mean. Yeah. No, it'll blow your, when you, your, yeah, your I mind, bro. I don't, I don't, you sold that movies and supplement I mean, recommendations, I just don't take that from you. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Supplement recommendations? You mean taste? <laughs> yes. Okay. That's what I mean by I that. was going to say. Because you're like, it's amazing. And then I taste it. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if this makes me live like Superman. I don't want to take this shit. Today's contest winner wins access to MAPS Aesthetic. Here's how you can enter the contest. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. Do all those things. If we like your comment, we will notify you in the comment section that you won MAPS Aesthetic for free. Also, we got a sale going on this month. Two programs are 50% off. MAPS OCR and MAPS Cardio, both half off. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below to get yourself set up. All right, here comes the show. Speaking of Superman, you're like oh. famous. 
What? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Bro, this is creepy. No, not true. Did you see the video? I saw the, little, the eye in the sky. They found you Adam at the was Warrior at, game, huh? Adam and Katrina went to a Warriors game. Oh. Is, that's a basketball team, right? Yes. That's and they're watching, uh, they're watching the game. I was just kidding. I know it's, it's I know, their basketball. But they're watching the game. And somebody who listens to Mind Pump was up like way in the, like in the stands yeah, yeah. and zoomed in on Adam and then posted it on that's Instagram. Great. <laughs> can I can I say though I did so I ran in I ran that's that, so weird it's like I, finding Waldo I ran into the couple and uh and they said hi and I I do appreciate this because I get it, it it is weird for me when people stare or act weird you know but if you come up and you say like the guy walked right up and said Adam like as we were getting yeah. ready to pass yeah that's and then immediately led cool. with my wife and I are huge fans of the show. Yeah. So then I know like right away because there's sometimes where I've had people like come up and they just start talking to me. And then what I'm- ha- You have to go through your head. I'm doing yeah. this like, am I supposed to know this person? Or like- have Did we I met- train them a long yes. time ago? Yes. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like racking my brain like, and they and they don't tell me anything like they're a, they're a fan of the show or something like that until maybe we've been sit- standing there for a few minutes. And it's always such an awkward exchange when that's the case. Because then I feel guilty like I'm supposed to know who the person is. So yeah. I do appreciate when people- say hi like that and then but i you know it's katrina was me. uh it's we were, way too weird for me yeah no i got i got a little upset katrina because she she got drunk at the game um because the the seats uh, had unlimited drinks for us right so she wanted to get her money's <laughs> worth so that's it's, 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 it's just and, and now you know people know you so <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. Like, yeah. She's having a good time yeah, yeah people are watching babe and she's introduced she introduces me like that i'm like don't do that Wait, how does said, she so you? just like she introduces me as who, uh, like Mind Pump, and who like that instead of just saying this is Adam. This is just, Mind Pump Adam. Yeah, like she, inter- <laughs> like she starts talking to people like that, and I'm like, "Honey, that's so embarrassing. Please don't do that." And then I'm like, "Have like person's like you're famous." I'm like, "No, no, yeah. you know, like no, I'm not." And then everybody turns around, you know, yeah. and everyone's turned around. The they're P-list. all looking on their phone and shit. I'm like, "This is embarrassing as fuck." That's, that's Please. not that bad. That's not a bad drunk story. Oh, I thought no, she was worse. No, no, it wasn't worse. She's than just that. proud of you. I saved her though, you know. What do you uh, mean? Yeah. We uh, actually had someone land in our lap, so that was pretty funny. A player? Yeah, yeah. Moses Moody came up for a lay. I saw it coming too because he was driving hard of the lane. We were we were literally right wow. underneath the hoop, so I had a feeling that it might happen. And uh, someone swiped the ball from him, and it went off his knee, so the ball went flying. And she had a drink. Thank God, I like I hit it, and then but I, I slapped it instead of catching it because he was following right behind, and then I caught him before he landed in. Did in you her catch lap. the ball? No, I slapped the ball down. Oh. So like he was, he, he was going <laughs> up for a layup. Like you can keep the ball, right? Yeah, no, I was going to ask you. <laughs> it's not like baseball. Hey, why don't you? Why can't you keep the ball? No, no, no. Mine. That would have been funny though that's, if I that's, tried. I feel like that should be the rules. Oh, uh, that's the baseball. ball, dude. You, like at that at that point, you're you're that close. Like you kind of always have to have your head on a swivel, right? Yeah, you, you, you look away. Like you could get like a shin. To oh, your I've dump. seen that. I've seen people. Yeah. I've seen people get jacked because they're talking. Yeah, and they're courtside like that, and a and player or a ball. I've seen balls. Yeah, so you playing and you, yeah. you caught caught Falling. him like like he sat in your lap, like you caught him. So I no, I caught him his like his chest. So he was still he was. Uh, I caught him before he fell. So I a little rub. Caught him before. I told him. I told him he's doing good. So yeah, yeah, good job. Good game. Yeah. <laughs> Get back out there. Yeah. Did they win after? We did. We did. We did win. Um, although, why do, you, why do you say we? Because I'm. You didn't he's part of it. <laughs> he's wearing the uniform. You didn't dude. do anything. Oh, look at her shake his head. <laughs> He's so bad. You know, it's funny. People do. I've been called out for that before. And I, I actually try not to say we. It's a bad habit. It's a bad habit to say we. Like, I, that's how much. <laughs> he so gets much into it, dude. I've it's, never missed. I, hey, listen. I get it. Hey, I'm going to say that okay, about I watch now. every. I every, said that I watch every game, every post game interview. Like, I feel like I'm a I'm a part of the team. You you're, know, you're I, don't, I don't get anything when they win. <laughs> I don't get anything when I win. I'm going to just start uh, saying that shit. You know, you know, crap. Cracker Jack, yeah, we, I didn't yeah. say we. Hey, I only do that with the Warriors. I ha- I don't feel as much as I'm a fan of like other teams. Uh, I'm not as big of a fan, so I don't say we're we. I have so much buy buy. Is that like a sports fan thing to say we? Sure, it is, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you you identify with the yeah, team. You're like, like committed they're, they're to yours, the team and their success. I'm gonna watch yeah. MMA and be like, yeah, we. Keep I mean, I, I I mean, <laughs> you know? I gamble on them all the time, so I feel like you know, and they some they come through. Did and you, I win. Did you win on this one? No. Listen to how this oh. how this went down. How funny is this, right? So we won the game. Warriors win, but the the spread the spread was higher. But I I teased it, which means I I bet with another game earlier in the day, which allows me to manipulate the points by six points. So I had Warriors minus five. 
So if you, that what that means is that the Warriors need to win by six or more. Otherwise, you don't win. Yeah, otherwise, I don't win. Okay. So we we were we were up by twenty most of the game. The fourth quarter, they come all the way back and they get it within four points at one point. Oh, and it's like yeah. a minute a minute and a half left, and I'm like, oh my god, are you kidding me? I've had this locked all game. Then we go on like a little small run and we we pull away again to like twelve points. And I'm like, whew, under a minute, like twelve points. I'm like, no big deal. Then they hit a then they hit a bucket again. I'm like, oh, that's right. It's still like thirty something seconds. I'm fine. <laughs> the end of the game. What normally happens when when it's almost impossible time wise and and point difference, most guys just let the clock go. If it's like yeah, 20, 20, 30 you seconds, play smart. Yeah, you're 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 uh, you know six plus points uh, away from us. There's you know there's no such thing as a six point play. It's only twenty seconds left, so they'll normally dribble it out. Some fucking rookie is in on the other team for the Kings, runs down, pulls up. No one's playing defense. They're just standing there because they know the clock's gonna go out in three seconds. Th hooks up a three and it hits and it lands on my spread. <laughs> so fucking thousand dollars I didn't win right there. Literally, like that was like I right now I didn't lose it because it landed right on the spread. So if it hits minus five, it hits five. I push, so I don't. Which means you get. You I get don't your money lose. Back. Yeah, but I mean, I. I mean, I had a thousand riding on it. That was. I like already. I was already celebrating. So that we the buzzer goes and everybody celebrated. Oh, did you? I did. <laughs> everybody kind of turned around and looked at me all weird. I'm like, we oh, lost. Yeah. Yeah. You, like, yeah. Throw your yeah. beer. Yeah. Ah! Wow. Like, it. It. I don't stuff. know. So those seats come with unlimited alcohol. They do. Wow. Right. And food. So they have a. They Is have it good a, food? Yeah, real good food. So they have somebody running it, or they have like a club that you have. Goes a, you have a club. So at that le at that level, you actually have access to all of these little private clubs that they have. And it's funny because there's like there's like levels to it. So you have like the the court side seats, and then you have like a one through five, which is right behind there. And then there's three like there's J P Morgan Chase like their like private area. Then they have like another like private area. And each one the perks are better. So like if you're in like the the lower level, like good seats, you can get like. Uh, sodas for free and beer on tap for free and pizza and like chicken mm. nuggets and fries and stuff like that, which is cool. It's a cool little, and it's got a cool lounge area. And then the next one up you get uh, like alcohol. So you can get uh beer and hard alcohol for free. And then has a little bit better buffet. And then the, the top tier is like, like hell of good food, hell of good mm. food, unlimited drink. Happy unlimited endings at the end of the game. Not quite that. <laughs> wow. but, okay. I mean, it gets yeah. everything else. I have else no in idea. There. Service so yeah, Katrina way. was like up and, and she made friends with the girl that we were sitting next to. We had the co-founder of uh, Airbnb in front of us. And so she was like talking to him and she's like, I'm going to try and get him on the show. I'm like, what? No. <laughs> I'm like, no. She's got all like, that liquid courage, you know? She's like, what? That wouldn't be the, we're networking. And then I'm she like, probably no. talks shit to you. Yeah. Well, what? You don't want to, yes. you, know, you can't she's do this? She's talking shit to me oh, and it's business? loud. He's like right there. I'm like, oh my God. Bro, that's a mirror right there for you. Oh, that's your God. wife is you, know, bro. That shit. Uh, she is, dude. She's too I much. I love her. No, I tell you what, she is. Uh, that was one of the things that, I mean, made me fall for her when we first got together was I used to love to do like networking with her and that used to be like um in my uh, late 20s uh it was dating like shake and bake dude well i just i <laughs> wow. uh, having a partner for me that was like a a must have like some guys don't care about this but i always wanted a, a girl that i could take to a party or go out to an event like this and i could completely like bail on her and leave her and she and would get hold her own yeah, yeah she would hold and i'd walk over and find her and, and she'd be that like five people will be standing around and she'll be running running the running the group and she's like that for sure so i like i, I like to leave my girls at parties <laughs> I, like, so, I know that sounds later. weird to say <laughs> that but that, no, no, that makes like sense. that's like it's like she'll tell you like like one of the first times we ever hung out that's a poof, i just i intentionally yeah. bail and then let her kind of do her thing yeah, she and, did the same to me you know yeah. like i've had to go to parties or i don't know anybody and you're just like hey no i give i give jessica very Smells very weather. explicit instructions i say <laughs> you need Joke. to be stuck to me everywhere i go anywhere i go you right stay right next hip. to me <laughs> and you just you just ask questions no that's not what happens <laughs> that's not what happens but now when you're that close when you're on the floor in at a at a professional basketball game because these are huge crazy ridiculous athletes because i've seen i saw a 90 mile an hour fastball once up close which is very different than when you watch it on TV. Oh, it'll blow your hair off. I've also seen a college level <clears throat> D1 athlete football player run who he was like 280 pounds. When you see it that close, it really changes your perspective. What does it look? I mean, because these guys I are even all. Think, I think I think it's even. So I've been to all sports, like or most sports, I should say, uh, hockey, football, basketball, baseball, and at that type of experience, really close. And 
I think basketball is the craziest because of how huge they are. Yeah, I mean, football guys are big too. Like yeah. a football player is really big. But one, when you're sitting on even the best seats in the house for football, still you're not like on the grass with. Yeah, them. I mean, they can't land in your lap. They, they can't. <laughs> Thank God. Right, that can't happen. That you can't, ha die. That can't happen only. in football. Right, there's a, and and they're not quite. And ba but basketball. I mean, you have you you watch a, a basketball game, and the smallest guy on the court is normally an inch or two taller than me. Yeah. So that is, and then they move like they're tiny and agile. So yeah. it's like this weird to see this human that's like seven foot tall. Yeah. That moves like that's lightning crazy. fast. And, that's crazy. And the footwork and yeah, it's a it's it's incredible to watch. And I, we're Katrina and I both are huge basketball fans, so we have this extra appreciation for the game like we see the game within the game and so i geek out on that stuff and it's really cool to have a partner who sees that stuff like she can see a play develop like i can and we're already like elbowing each other mm. like knowing what's going to happen oh, that's awesome and to see it that that close is always really that's awesome really really cool i would just be enjoying the drinks and food. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> talking to the airbnb guy dude speaking of partners and stuff i feel like baby's coming soon i feel like very soon yeah. She's doing the crazy cleaning. She's yeah. doing the like sending me super nice messages. <laughs> Followed by a crazy one. No, like, all uh, super sweet. Nice. And this like, is new. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. All super nice and yeah. the super cleaning and organizing. And I'm like, oh, this is coming soon, man. I'm excited, bro. Did What's, you you guys I, I read mm. a crazy study? They did a study in Spain on men uh who had babies that were seven to nine months old, and they had uh they took these same men scanned their brains before they became fathers and then scanned their brains at seven and nine months or seven, seven and nine months after they had a baby. And they found, and they used control. So they used control groups. They found changes in the brains of the men. Like lower IQ? No. <laughs> <laughs> lower testosterone, lower IQ? <laughs> no. No, look, uh, I'll, I'll bring it up to you. So it was, they, it suggests, the study suggests that more higher order cognitive processing is involved in fatherhood. So the cortical regions- Oh, I, I, I could test to that. I think so. So cortical regions that are that, that where they saw changes are involved in social cognition, goal-oriented attention, and empathy. <clears throat> empathy. So hmm. while subcortical regions control an ancient reward motivation circuit, so they're all key parts of the brain for optimal parenting. So how cool is so that? Do you, do you so guys the brain is plastic. It literally changes as plastic. It, it becomes more plastic- when you first became uh, become a father, can you all remember mm. what like was the most significant change in yourself that kind of happened like immediately? Obviously, as you as you progress into fatherhood, lots change, a lot of stuff I don't, changes. I can't but think do you of remember it. something in you that just was so different that you're Bro, like, every year, everything. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, and I, well, and I just say that like tongue in cheek, but it's real. Like I, you, you just are so much. Uh, you just recognize like so many more dangers and so many more potential things that like you're just you're you're on the peripheral, always like looking out now instead of like just thinking about your day to day thing or whatever. You know, I can just handle myself like pretty easily at that point, but now I have to like consider the fact that I have to look out for this little human being. It's like oh, that just struck me as uh, yeah. What about you? It's weird um, that. God, it's like everything changed. I think the biggest thing was um, how much more important this this creature is, right? This human, this, this baby is than anything else. And there's no words to describe it like that. Like everything else doesn't matter now. All of a sudden, everything matters in relationship to your kid. Yeah. Like, oh, my job? Well, that matters for this. Oh, those hobbies I have? That may matter for <clears throat> this. Like all of a sudden, it's like, nothing's more important and then you don't and it's a weird feeling because it's so um so powerful i don't know and that provides you know sort of oh my god mechanism going in overdrive it could become it dysfunctional like, ah, right because like, you'll just overwork yeah yourself it totally it. did that with my first kid for yeah. sure doug do you remember yours yeah for me it was sleep <laughs> Siri, I know what I mean to say is I used to be able to sleep through anything. Uh, uh. And then as soon as Brianna was born, you like know, high, alert. Like uh, high alert, like high alert. Yeah. And, and yeah. from that point forward, anytime Never. there's like a noise or something, I'm up. I wake interesting. up. Yeah. So oh, totally different. Mm. Oh, that's interesting. What about you, Adam? Uh, there's two things that come to mind for me. 
that were really different. One, uh, money. My relationship with money was really interesting how it shifted so radically really quick. And I, I would I would say I, I was I've always been good with money, but uh, I I've always had also had this like oh I, I can always make it I'll always have it versus like really now and being like planning right and and thinking like ten years ahead where would I want to be able to do this planning and that, is a big one yeah like I used to not I I used to not be that way um, and then the other one like you know the uh, what the WWJD what would Jesus do thing yeah. I have this like. What what would what would my son think if he saw me say that or do that? Like I never thought I used to have this attitude of like yeah, I'm nobody's right. fucking role model. That's your bad if you think you should. We look have at, you saying that on the podcast. I, did I say that many times? Yeah, when I was we first started. That, this that is so was my attitude forever. Yeah. Was like I just you know now like, you are. Yeah. So yeah. now now I I do think differently because it's my son, right? If I'm like it's your bad if you <laughs> follow me if you're somebody else. You know <laughs> if your kids, I warned you. Yeah. I warned you. <laughs> I'm not your kid's dad. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But now that I have a son, I actually do process that a lot. Like you know, there's times when I when I'm I'm contemplating something, you know, whether I should or shouldn't do it. And one of the things that uh, without even trying. I go. Oh, what would my you know? What would my boy think of his dad if he heard that or saw that or knew that? Like, and that many times. Here's here's something that that's weird. Is I can make myself emotional at any given moment if I just think about my kids and I think about something bad yeah. happening or something. Um, they getting married or them I've, having their I, own kids. I, noticed, I, noticed I could that literally too. do that. Yeah. Any minute I want if I wanted to, to the point where I block it out. <laughs> <laughs> don't think about. It. Don't get emotional. You know Use that for your next role. Along dude. those yeah. lines, along <laughs> those lines, Sal is I actually that those creep in weird like that. I I get like, a, oh, like yeah. I'll have these weird like over the top like like sad. I don't even want to repeat them. I don't want to put that energy out there and say it. But like I will. I'll, like where'd that thought come? And then through? you just ruin your yeah. day. Yeah. Just why yeah. would I even think something so terrible would happen like that? And it does hit like hit me to the core. Like that's something. That oh, you just wait till the they get a driver's scenario, bro. And they get no. a driver's license. My oldest he drives, and uh, I don't remember where he was going, but I call. Oh, he was here. He was here doing work, and they were having a meeting, and so he didn't answer his phone. So I called him. He didn't answer. Okay. I wait like five minutes. Immediately, the the scary thoughts start. Wait, what if you oh know he just God. started driving? And what yeah. if the hmm? Then I call over here to see if somebody's with him. Nothing. I look on his phone, find my phone. I see where it's at. I'm like, well, what if he got in a car accident right in front of work? And I'm like freaking out until he calls me back. That was all in a ten minute period. Like that would <laughs> like that never happened before. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it's uh, yeah, it's weird stuff. All right, some more uh, cool science. Did you guys know that they can they can predict cancer risk by the shape of your penis? Stop. Wait a minute. Bro, sounds like some sounds like some horoscope bullshit. No. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like I just, or like a real thirsty scientist. Yeah. I just read an article. I just read an article. Come on. Now, before Come everybody on. freaks out, I can Gary. predict. Yeah. Before everybody freaks out, there's a there's something called uh, I think it's called. Pe oh, let me think. What? First by of the all, way, what are the shapes? By, by the way, this yeah. is a study. They were, they were all mushroom esque. No, nope. no. <laughs> Very German helmet. Is there another shape? You've seen a lot, is there, right? Is there, so you know. is there another shape no. I'm unaware of. Huh? No, having to do with if it's curved or whatever. Oh. So one and a half oh. million men. This is a study of a, a one and a half million men find a link between penis shape and cancer. So they found that people with a curved penis had a significantly higher chance of developing several types of cancer. What? Oh, so man. now, hold Dirty. on. Man, two Everybody strikes. Called <laughs> 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 Why two? It curves twice. Who wants the curvy one? <laughs> yeah, I don't it's know. S, S oh, curve. Oh, you get an S, bro? <laughs> 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 two strikes. I, I got no. You got three. He didn't feel like three that. Three out, dude. No, it says, okay, so first off, it's not a normal curve. So obviously there's normal curvature to some people's penises, but this says that people with penile fibrosis, I don't know you guys, did you guys know this is a thing? Penile fibrosis <laughs> called uh, Peyronie's disease. So this is when some of the erectile tissue of the penis. Numb or something? Huh? What is it? Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay. I don't want to jump to conclusions. It's where some of the, the erectile, so you guys know that, um, I don't know if you guys know this actually, it's extremely important that you get erections while you sleep. And this happens when you're first born. This is, happens to babies, happens until, hopefully until the day you die. Okay. Because mm. the tissue of the penis has to uh, expand and contract in order to stay healthy because it's uh, it's like a sponge, right? Elastic, yeah. so, so there's a there's a disease called Peyronie's disease where, and this can happen through injury 
or it could happen th through um, poor health, where some of the tissue becomes hardened, so it no longer can expand and contract. And that's what they think the problem is. So people who mm. start to develop this, they'll start their shape of their penis will start to change and will curve in one direction or another because some of the tissue becomes, uh, I guess, fi Oh, like so there's fibrosis. some people that didn't have a curved penis to start with. Correct. Got a curved penis. Yeah, because at first I'm like, well, that sucks. Started leaning. But no, but it has <laughs> to do, I know. But it, but it literally is, it has to do with that. And there's actual pictures here that we could uh, we could post for the- Great, yeah. For the uh, for the YouTube. Yeah. Are they are they yours and Doug's? No, they're- or who did, <laughs> Some, some no, leaning they're towers. <laughs> yes, which one's mine? <laughs> They call no, they're they're like they're like not real pictures or like oh, drawings. Like, or oh, whatever. drawing. Okay. But yeah, I read the, I read the title. I'm like, who's studying this? How yeah. the hell did they do this? That's what I'm wondering. But yeah, so the the apparently, which is kind of cool, the health of the erectile uh, of your erectile tissue is closely connected to your overall health, hmm. which is kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Well, the, like hormones in balance and all. The that the too, more right? the more you know. The more you know. All right, I'm gonna bring well, some more cool stuff for you. Now that okay. I, I talked about uh, Wangs, which yeah, Doug, I was gonna Doug transition always to my wife sleeping, but thinks this is whoa, wow. That, well, that that goes, be, I want to hear that first. It's such a good transition. <laughs> I want to hear that first because speaking I of curved, at night. speaking of curved dicks, uh, my wife <laughs> and I had uh, <laughs> she was examining me the other day. No, um, what happened with your wife? No, so yeah, so. I've been taking a lot of the, the mellow out of the back, and I know nobody's fighting me on that right now, but it's not for me, actually. Like, Courtney has been taking all of mine because I've been looking for her at the house. I'm pretty sure, like, she's been doing it, like, every night, like, is addicted to it, but it's been getting really good sleep. So. I mean, I, th I really think that, I mean, the study is, I think, 60% is what I read. Yeah. 60% of people, Majority people are deficient. So you have more than half. I really think it's one of those supplements, and I this is a, this is a type of review. You just I don't get. know. By yeah. the way, some people I'll get a review. Some people are like, oh, I really didn't notice anything. Then I, it's literally either that or oh my god. Yeah. That's literally the what I. You get guys, from I don't people. know if you guys, you guys probably don't check because I'm the one that that does this. But there's different forms of magnesium in Mellow. Yeah. Each version, or sorry, each form, uh, gets absorbed by different tissues in the body. So some are better for the brain, other better for the central nervous system, others better for muscle tissue. So they include, I'm, I want to say, three or four types of magnesium. So that's why some people are like, because I had messages from people who used another type of magnesium. And they're kind of like diuretics or like- uh, You mean a laxative? A laxative. I mean, yeah, yeah, there's uh, some are not absorbed well at all. Yeah. And then you could just take a ton of it and just poop yourself. But no, th these types that they include are the ones that are- Do you know that something I've actually noticed before was I've taken other brands of magnesium and it does make me have to go poop like pretty quick afterwards- that does not happen with mellow at all. Yeah, at all. No, no, I've no. ne that's never happened where I've taken. No, it's it not. Less. It's not the laxative version. It's the, these are the these are the forms of magnesium that are get assimilated uh, well by the body. Hmm. They also throw a little gab in there, which is a um, a helps. Yeah, I think that one helps. And too. theanine. That's, that's really, everything that's in it. Right there's there. also theanine. Put in you there. in sleep. Yeah, mode. so magnesium uh, glycinate, uh, aquamin, magnesium, magnesium lactate, gluconate. Then there's also GABA and theanine in there, and there's some trace minerals. So sodium bar carbonate, but that's just to give it the, make it fizz. Yeah. So that's, and those are all things like, try it out. This is what, what I like about Mellow. So Ned has their hemp sleep blend, which is a hammer. Like you take that, you're going nine. -nine. Oh yeah. That's the one I take on if I'm on the road. Yes. And I'm in a hotel. Boom. Yeah. That's out. a hammer. Mellow is daily. You can use that daily and it's not going to like just Did it, when they When they had the lemon flavor, was that just like a, like a one-off thing or is that like consistently stock? Because, and I know they're going to listen. So I'm asking the boy, yeah. if you're listening to this commercial. I like the lavender one, but I'm with you on the lemon. I, like plain. I haven't tried really? the new. Plain. No, I don't like I, plain. I, I like both plain and lavender, but I haven't had the lemon one. The, the, oh, it's still there. Meyer Lemon. Yeah, please. Can I'll you guys you guys hook it up with everything else? Can you guys send me that one so I could try it out and talk about it? Because yeah. I haven't had that one yet, and I love it. I take it every single night. So, and the only reason why you can get a hold of it is because I've already like you already. Stuck oh yeah, no, I have like what? I have like twelve boxes st stocked okay. up at That's my house. That's a lot. Bro. Yeah, I, every night I go. I thought it. I was good, and I seriously was like putting my travel thing together, and and was like totally depleted, and then I finally found out. I, I, I would like every night. I would say of all the the partnerships and supplements that we have, 
I've been the most consistent with that than probably anything else because it was so impactful for me. I, mm. I just didn't, and I didn't anticipate that. I didn't think that it was going to be a big deal. I rem I'm so glad we ended up. You were la you lacked magnesium. Remember when you did the test? Though? Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, looking back now, it makes total sense. Yeah. But I didn't re I didn't realize how much I would I would feel it. Like I like a lot of times. Come on, let's be bro. Honest. Having a mineral deficiency yeah. is a big deal. You, you if somebody has a mineral deficiency and then they replenish that mineral, it's life changing. Because you yeah. you get symptoms, the deficiencies deficiency symptoms can seem like chronic disease, can seem like anxiety, can seem like uh, insomnia, pain, and all kinds of weird shit. You live with it so long, it's like normal. Yeah, right? you don't know any different. So it's you, basically it's you're, you're now you're getting what you're supposed to, and now your body can operate the way it's supposed to. Yeah, well, it was life changing. It was life changing for me. So I was. found a super cool chart that I want to share with you guys. It's okay. the title of this chart is the age. You peek at everything according to science. <laughs> Can we guess? Let's all guess. No, 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 okay, no, no. Wait, wait. What no, do you no, mean no. everything? Okay, like, all Thank categories. You. Thank like, you. Okay. So it's not the age you you're the best at doing everything. It's the ages you're the best at certain things. Okay, so tell like us a certain age, thing and then we guess. Let us. Okay, guess. so the first don't, one don't is the answer. What like age 30. do you think we peek at learning a new language? Oh, that's uh, six 16. or seven. Seven. Oh. Seven, right come on, on come the dot. On, way off. One for so me. So science says that's the best. What about brain processing power? So the power of your brain to actually process, right? To, to Is go that through like to analyze? Yeah. So pro brain, just just pure brain processing power. Uh, and is this is this just for men or men and women? Uh, I believe this is both. Okay, so I'm gonna say twenty nine. I say later, actually. Let's say like forty. So it's eighteen. Oh, now, man, now here's no. the deal. I suck at this game. What you guys are saying kind of makes uh, sense, but you guys are thinking of things like achievements and stuff like this. Is pure. Yeah. I'm thinking of acquiring data points. How many then, of these are there? There's a whole bunch, so I'm going to go through them because those ways take forever. No, this is kind of fun. 22 is the t the peak of remembering names, the peak of female attractiveness to men. Oh, yes, yeah, this is a fun one. Female. So, like the hot, like what age are women the most? Generally considered the most attractive to men. Oh, to men. Yeah. <laughs> 23. Yeah. 23. On the dot. Yeah. Adam's pretty good at this. Uh, Come on, dude. Come on. Homework. Give me another one. What's, what's the peak for muscle strength? For guys? This Tw is for everybody. everybody. 25. 25. Get. Come on, let's go. Come Where's on. the? Are you cheating? No, I'm not cheating. This is keep bullshit. On, keep going. Come How on. How does he know all this huh? stuff? I've got a photograph of memory. This I is crazy. He used to work at a carnival. <laughs> <laughs> That's this guy. Yeah. Come on. All right. What's the peak? Some of these are boring, so I'm gonna skip some. The peak performance for running a marathon. Ooh, that actually is gonna be later. Mm. It's going to be 32, 35. That, that's a good guess. Actually. I like that. I'm going to go with just, I'm going to go even later. 38, 28, uh, oh. 28. Okay. The age that you're most, that you can remember the most faces 32. Okay. Oh, now here's some cool ones. Jump the gun. What's the peak for making a Nobel prize winning discovery? Oh, 60, 40, 40. Oh, 40. Justin gets one <laughs> on the books. Yeah. Uh, the peak age for men with salary. So the, the general age a man will earn the most he's ever going to earn. 48. Right on the dot. Oh, 48. Oh, wow. Right Doug. on the dot. Wow. So now I'm going to now Crazy. I'm going to I'm going to skip some cuz these are pretty cool. The the peak age for understanding people's emotions. So uh, on men or women's side. It's for both. Oh, it's it's general. On. Yeah. It's 51. Oh wow. Yeah. Emotional that, intelligence is way you know behind, huh? You know what's cool oh, about wow. this? Right? What's, cool about, men, what, what's cool about this is there's a lot of them after our age. So it's cool. It's kind of cool to look forward Not to Doug, this, right? Bro, so much. You're pretty much peaked out, bro. Yeah, the, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty much washed up. Yeah, you're pretty much peaked. You're, <laughs> he's ever stood everything. No, he's not. There's a lot. He still he's hasn't not, well, hit let's, yet. Let's let's do some ones for Doug. Life right. satisfaction. Sixty nine. Oh. Okay. So I tell So I tell I tell I tell this story about that. You guys are children. Listen, I tell this story to people that like like talk about like trying to go, oh, the, this is the best time, like eras. I'll never forget. I was running this boot camp class that I had for years. And I, it was a pretty big site. It was a pretty big, I see like 20 something people in, on the day that I brought this up. And I have literally from age 18 to like 65, maybe even a little bit older in there of, of people. And I was curious to them that, uh, when do you think was your best years of your life? If you know that yeah. looking back and every single person said right now. Yeah. 
They said, and they, they all had reasons, even the oldest one, of why life wow. is better at that age. And so it just continues to give the things that you trade off for youth, say looks and, you know, agility and those things like that, you gain wisdom and security and well, here's, confidence. Here's and, two of them that are, are fascinating to me that tell us a lot about uh, certain things that we tend to struggle through as we, especially for people who are interested in health and fitness. The peak age where you are happy with your body is 74. <laughs> wow. wow. 74. It takes that long. Huh? You know why? You know, that, that's just, has I don't nothing, give a shit no more. No, that's it's that not is. that I don't give a shit. It's acceptance. It, it, I mean, obviously. Yeah, but that's a long time for you to go to, to finally accept. Well, it. I'm sure there's. Like, well. remember, this, remember, this is average, right? So some people younger, older. But I love this because this tells you right now that if you're just so unhappy with your body, it has less to do with the way your body looks and more to do with how you care about yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's why when people are 70 fucking four, yeah. they, ha they hit that peak. It, well, it's why you it's always refer back to those pictures and you're like, oh my God, it was so great looking back. It has nothing to do and with in, that. In that time period, you're just like, oh, I hate that's myself. Right. It also explains the old guy with no towel walking in the locker room. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Just talking just to you. super confident. Talking to you just, with his foot up. Yeah. Like, no. He's hella <laughs> happy with the Not giving a shit. Yeah, just beer belly hanging out and everything. So like, here's, an an here's another you one. You guys game. No. No, Carl. Right here, <laughs> here's, here's, Carl, put it away. Here's, here's, the, here's the last one that I think is pretty cool. The peak <laughs> for psychological well-being, 82. <laughs> when you're dead? No, obviously they're alive. <laughs> now, you know what? This is so cool because, again, it's I like it. 82, <laughs> you're old, you're less mobile, you're less. There's all kinds of stuff people would say, oh, I don't want to be in my 80s. I don't want. But that's the peak of psychological, which tells you what? It has less to do with the shit you have and, and how mobile in the body, what you could do, and all that stuff, how attractive, all that stuff has more to do with your wisdom and how you accept life. How cool is that? Yeah. It's cool. Isn't that cool it's, stuff? It's a mindset like for sure. Yeah, I, like I like that. that. I like that stuff. It's really cool. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, Adam, I want to hear about uh, Pepsi because you've written that up there for a while. Actually, we brought it up. I brought it up on the last conversation that I had with Chris Nagibi about um, inflation. So right now, what is inflation at eight point something? And the one of the biggest arguments about uh, inflation right now is the way that they measure it today and how oh, yeah. how that's changed over years. They now, changed I, it. To I was really it. unaware of this actually until recently. You didn't know that? Yeah, I really didn't understand. Didn't they first they change it in the 70s? It again, right? It's actually, I think, been changed a couple times. And since then. Yeah, okay. so it's been changed a couple times. And it's it's kind of interesting how they they leave out certain things. Like gas. Yeah, that really impact everybody's uh -huh. life which is kind of silly, right? And so there's a big argument that's going around uh, that the you know core inflation, that the score that we're getting right now is grossly under what it truly is. It's the, and a double better, digits. And a see. better indicator is things that we are using day to day, like gas, or in this case, why I brought this up is Pepsi. Like Pepsi is widely drank by most Americans. And they have to move their prices based off oh, of what's going on in the market. And they showed a 17% yeah. increase year over year on what they're charging for that. So, and that when I talk to people right now that are, that are really impacted right now by what, what's going on in, in, in the economy, as far as inflation and stuff, everyone's just talking about their grocery bill. That's what I hear. Gas, gas right. and grocery bill. Yeah. Those are the two that people go like. And are those factored in or are they not in the new definition? The gro they, the groceries, I, I I believe some of them are, not everything. That's right. right. Yeah. They, so like, what they, how can they do that? Because this is what they. Well, it's just like, what, remember what they did this year too about saying that we're not in a recession? Well, I a mean, recession I just, used to be. I understand two, lying is two part of the course negative here, but GDP, like, GDP quarters in a row. And then now they're like, magically this year, that no longer is. It's literally. <laughs> it's crazy. It's literally insanity it's gaslighting so what they literally do is they say oh shit inflation they did this in the 70s first oh shit inflation's really bad let's change the way we can we 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 count inflation yeah so that the number's less and let's take these things out and so the the, the reasoning was well gas <coughs> can be manipulated by this that and the other but here's the bottom line what Everybody's use dependent on it what use is the inflation number if it doesn't apply to the average person i don't give a shit what number you come up with if it's for shit that I'm not going to buy, I don't care about. Or if the stuff that I buy is way more. What does that say up there, Doug? Yeah, it does not include that. 
<laughs> yeah, it says core inflation is a change in the cost of goods and services, but it does not include those from the food and energy sectors. And which, they, they cite volatility the biggest, as a which, reason. Which, by the way, PGE, factors. gas, and your groceries are like the three most impactful things. Yeah, you don't, <laughs> nobody's, <laughs> re- <laughs> nobody's complaining about like how, how expensive tennis shoes are or, you know, like, yeah. like, stuff like that. Or wow. streaming services. Right? Maybe, Doug, you can look up um, how they change. How, how was inflation calculated in before or maybe in the 1970s because it's changed. i'll get into some of this stuff with chris so we'll definitely talk this will be this. a great man discussion. yeah we'll, we'll talk about this stuff he loves to talk about this too dude, that's incredible dude. yeah i think <laughs> it was 1980 oh inflation rate is calculated by change in the consumer price index the cpi 1980 uh oh it doesn't tell you what they were counting yeah i think we have to do a little research that's now. all right yeah. we'll leave that up to the or, or, or tune in when i do my live thing with chris because it's going to be we'll, we'll get into stuff like this for sure yeah I'm, yeah it's uh, I don't know. I think the consensus is out too. I think who was it? Was it uh, it was J.P. Morgan? What's his name? The uh, Jamie Dimon came out and said that first. Like they have just now changed the probability of a recession to in next year a hundred percent. So it's no longer like a eighty percent. It's been like seventy five percent, fifty percent. It you know is going to happen now. Obviously, there's a huge argument that we're in the recession already. Doesn't it feel? But like- that's actually scarier to me that. They claim that we're not in a recession, and they say it's 100% certain. Yeah, so what the hell is that going to look like? Right. Doesn't that, isn't that weird? Does it seem like this to you that they wait until it becomes so obvious that they have to say something? You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Well, this it one feels they, like that. Well, they they kind of have to, right? Because this one is the 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 talking points were we it was a, a tra- transitory. <laughs> that was a talking point for the last year. Was that. <laughs> This is not going to stick around. This is transitory. This is tra- and so they they were they were going to string along the <laughs> transitory the talking point for as long as they could until they can no longer say it's transitory anymore. You know, it's I don't know. It's, to me, it seems parallel of like um, how these big mega companies always have to have show profit year after year after year, and now in like the in politics, you cannot have any. Like anything bad happened, like they'll just spin it, and you can't own up to anything that's not going well, and like be honest. Oh, it's. I mean, that is like the definition of politics, right? Well, it's yeah, the, but it's, it's like there it used to be like, oh, we're gonna have. There would be some real conversations like that would come out sometimes. Like you guys might want to, you know, prepare for what's coming, and like yeah. at least give us like a heads up of like and be honest. If like the last it's pure and utter bullshit. Listen, if the last few years hasn't woken you to the insanity of it all, then ain't no, nothing's going to do it. That's the bottom line. That's why I hated it to begin with. I didn't the last, any part of it. The last few years was just lie after lie after lie and blowing smoke and pissing on your back and telling you it's rain wow. every freaking other day. Yeah. So this is all par for the course. Well, and they're just brave about it. Much more brave than they were before. If you guys want to be uplifted at least uh, <laughs> from this, like, so there's this hilarious show that I thought was like one of the best ideas I've ever seen for somebody to, and it's just like a talk show normally, but uh, they brought on these guests that had really unique laughs. And so like, Oh, I saw a clip of this. Oh my God. I was dying. <laughs> That was a show. So I saw the clip. Yeah. Go yeah, viral. So some French TV show, but like, so they, they kind of placed them all together. Somebody said something that, that got one of them laughing and it was like, yeah, like something really weird. And then that set off another one who started laughing. And then it was like this snowball effect. So they're all doing these really crazy ass laughs, which, you know, makes it like, Everybody just laughs like for I don't know above, like twenty I think minutes above, above their names or something like that. It would it said like you know hyena you know yeah, the hyena <laughs> laughter they, they all had like yeah. a like a type and yeah. so you, if you you can totally visualize the the laugh and then you hear them all dude, laughing it was pretty I, how, I saw that clip. this is how, dude I was dying this is how weird humans are they're like uh, yawning is contagious crying is contagious uh, there's been um, like documented events where there's Called, Do we like know mass, why? Where people have mass psychosis or they'll pass out. Have you heard of these? Yeah. Where there'll be a bunch of people, all of a sudden they come down with like this mysterious illness, they all pass out, but then nobody got sick. It was literally a psychological phenomenon Yeah. because you're reading other people. Well, I know this is controversial to say Super this, but weird. isn't this happening right now? I heard this and I, I maybe somebody can fact check me, but aren't, aren't we seeing like packs of girls that are 
transgender now that are oh, like... Oh, there's been, there was someone that talked about that. that. Is that true? Do you know if that's true or not? The, the percentage increase in young girls. I know that's off the charts. Like, like hundreds of percent. And, and I think hundreds what I time. heard was most alarming about it was that it's happening in like packs of teenage girls. That's what the, Like was five one, girls all of a sudden decide that they want to change. All friends. Yeah. There was an author that wrote about that. I haven't read enough uh, to uh, about that to comment, yeah, but there's know. an author that uh, provi- is pr- apparently providing hmm. data... And studies on that saying. That I mean, that, if it's true, it highlights yeah. the point you're making. Right. We're extreme. It's contain. Look, laughing is. This is why um, old sitcoms had a laugh track. They would have fake laughter in the back. Yeah, even if it's cheesy, it try, does add to it. Bro, try watching Full House from the '90s without a laugh track. It's no weird. Way. It's hella weird. Oh. <laughs> it's so funny. My youngest. So I was watching. I was on Instagram, and I went on. What's that guy's pay, be a man? The be mm-hmm. a man page. Yeah. And there was Boston one, be a man. Oh, bro, that was one I hilarious word. It, it, it's the stupidest thing, but it's like real stuff. And this one reminded my dad, reminded me of my dad. It said, uh, "Fall asleep while watching TV, and then when someone changes the channel, wake up and yell at them or something like that." I'm like, yeah. "Oh my god, it's such a dad thing, <laughs> you know? Your dad's <laughs> sleeping. Like, You're asleep. Let's go. Ah, who turned the channel? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. That reminds me of Sal. If I, if he's sleeping on the plane, I go to a video of him. He pops up right away. Gets hella mad. Even if you're like ten rows yes. away and you're just like, yeah. I have a oh, thing. So he, he, he pops up. Don't record me. Like, yeah. Who's doing that? I'll get you back. I have it's a like, <laughs> yeah. little spidey sense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what it sounds like too. Yeah. Uh, but so. anyway, uh, we were looking at this guy's Instagram and my and my oldest and I were just cracking up and Aurelius was sitting in my lap and he was laughing with us. He didn't even know why we were laughing. Oh, yeah. So Jessica, Jessica recorded him just laughing with us. He's oh. like, ha, 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 ha. I'm like, you don't know why we're laughing, dude. <laughs> kid, <laughs> what are you doing right kid now? Kid laughs are hilarious. He's ahead of his dude. time, dude. Oh, yeah. it's the best. It's the best. Anyway, uh, yeah, wish me luck. Uh, I feel like the baby's coming soon. All right, dude. That's that. Plus, my wife is looking. Whew, did this happen to you? Did this happen to you guys when your wives were pregnant? That that like dudes check them out <laughs> when they're pregnant? Yeah, I, I, I feel know, like guys maybe. are like looking at my wife more I mean, than ever. I mean, I'm. They're, I mean, she looks amazing. Glowing and everything, so, right? At that point, you're yeah. what? I'm. I'm into the pregnant thing. I, uh, I'm, yeah, I was. I was attracted. <laughs> I think like our 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 sex went up when we when wow. she got pregnant yeah. yeah yeah i don't know what it was uh-huh. yeah. i'm the opposite <laughs> <laughs> i think most people are the opposite it wasn't that way for and I, my I, wife I, what, looks amazing what i don't know to be honest with you maybe if it happens again I'll, I'll be more aware of it if it was like like i was like it was something physical or was it something more like she's carrying my son i think that's what it was well, yeah, may, and maybe a little bit but of i don't know i see dudes looking at her and whatever and she does look my wife does look in- incredible um especially being she's ready to go at any minute but uh, no, I'm definitely fine. That's my kid in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's just kind of weird, you know? I feel different about that now. You know, I'm pretty confident, but normally I'm like, what the fuck, bro? She's hella pregnant. Get the fuck out of here. Eyes up here. A lot of people don't know this, but when you drink alcohol, you create a byproduct called acetaldehyde. And this is the primary culprit behind rough mornings after drinking. Where there's a product called Zbiotics, it's a genetically modified probiotic. It's patented, so you can't find it anywhere else that actually breaks down the acetaldehyde in your gut so you feel much better. So here's how it works. You drink Zbiotics, then you enjoy your evening with your friends, have some wine, have some drinks, and the next day, you feel better. Go check this company out. Go to zbiotics.com, that's Z-B-I-O-T-I-C-S.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump 22 for 10% off your first order. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Isaac from Arizona. Isaac, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, how's it going? Good. Uh, I'm glad I found a slot that worked. I, I uh, had to turn down a slot last week because I was out of town for a conference. But mm. um, You're lucky we never give any, anybody a second chance. <laughs> oh, yeah. First, <laughs> first second chance. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, in my email, I think I must have been caffeinated that day. I included a lot of background. I don't know if I need to include all of that or just kind of go into my Probably more not. immediate question. Go ahead, go into your question and, and we'll ask you questions if we think we need more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I have gotten into client. Okay. I'll, just a little bit of background. I had been running for the last few years and then about a year and a half ago, um, I had an ankle chronic ankle pain that prevented me from running. Um, so I started climbing was doing that. And then this last summer I got a surgery on my ankle. Um, it was a bone spur. And so I was out of the climbing gym for a few months. And during that time I was go- going kind of crazy at home and I realized I could still manage to lift some weight. So I started nerding out on, uh, resistance training, uh, found you guys, lots of other resources. And, um, 
I've been learning a lot and enjoying that. Um, but now that my ankle's better, I'm climbing again, and now I'm back in school full time. So I actually really identified with a, another guest you guys had on recently who was talking. I think he was a uh, an athlete, uh, but definitely like overtraining himself. And I'm definitely realized I've been overworking myself. I've just been sore and tired pretty constantly. Um, and yeah, this week I actually just decided to tweak my shoulder a little bit last week climbing and I just decided to take a break. I knew I'd be talking to you guys and I'm just looking for, I've actually never heard a climber on your podcast. So I'm just trying to optimize my climbing routine, which is very specific, pretty exhausting and like uh, works very specific muscle groups, but I'd like to uh, include weight training to kind of stay more well-rounded. We didn't. We didn't just have a climber. We had the climber right. on our show. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I haven't listened to everything. I've just been listening the last couple of months. I have to pull the episode up for you. I can't remember what number. What number it was? What was his name? Tommy Caldwell. There you go. Caldwell. Tommy Caldwell. Was oh, okay. Yeah. 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 That, was, that was a great one. You know, um, how many days a week are you climbing, and for how long? So I've, I've been uh, bouldering twice a week, early morning before classes, and then on the weekend I do a um, rope climbing. Which are definitely work. I feel like the rope climbing is much more like full body. Yeah. Uh, people compare bouldering to like powerlifting or something. It's intense and short. Um, right. And so your goal is to get better at climbing and to prevent injury, right? Yeah, I would like to get better at climbing and prevent injury, but I'm not also trying to be a world class climber. I, I want to, like, I, a lot of the time I'll end up bouldering and then like wanting to exercise all the muscles, you know, like the upper body stuff. Yeah like treat that as an upper body day and then try to, you know, work the muscles that don't get worked one, from bouldering. But one, uh, I think I've been overdoing it. One, one day, maybe two days of lifting. Maybe one day a week. Yeah. That's it. One, I would go one, one day, one, two tops, one day a week. You'd pick, um, do a couple compound lifts and then do, do like some mobility stuff and that's it. And the mobility stuff is going to be focused on uh, shoulder mm -hmm. mobility and core stability because you need both. And you know, this is a lot of technical aspects to climbing. So it's not just strength. Um, and now from a muscle standpoint, you probably don't want to build huge legs either. Um, you'll notice the top climbers in the world don't have really big legs. They yeah. just have really good leg Body flexibility. Body mass doesn't really aid in your pursuits. No. Yeah. And you'll want good mobility in your lower body because you know you'll have to reach up with your foot and place yourself in a weird position. Yeah. So yeah. I, would go, I would go maybe two or three compound lifts. Um, I like, okay, so I, I, I've trained some climbers and I would have them do rowing because of all the pull-up type motions that they would do. So, you know, you're still strengthening the back, but you're also strengthening it from an angle that maybe helps balance out, uh, you know, the, the kind of pull down or pull up type movement, um, shoulder mobility work. So working on scapular mobility, working on external internal rotation of the humerus and that kind of stability, because that's where you'll see some of the injuries. And then wrist yeah. mobility is going to be really good because of the amount, the dexterity that required in the hands, fingers. And then the, if you're going to overtrain anywhere, it's going to be your hands and you'll yeah. notice pain in your elbows. And so that, that would probably, uh, be something I would focus on as well, but one day a week. No, no this more is that. actually where I think kettlebells would fit nicely in, in a bit more unconventional type of tools, <laughs> mainly for, um, you know, the different controls and the different forces, like say you're doing a bottoms up kettlebell press, um, and just to, to establish a little more stability, uh, within, within your strength, uh, in, in combination with that. So they just bode well for a lot of rotational movements and a lot of movements outside of, uh, the scope of like, you know, cables and dumbbells and barbells, for instance. So, uh, I mean, that's something I would include in terms of your strength training regimen, but definitely once a week. Uh, is probably sufficient in terms of just overall strength training. I think the most prescriptive thing that we have that I would give you is MAPS performance. And I would have you do one of the foundational days a week out of there. And then if you had a good week of rest or maybe you didn't do as much climbing, you felt really good, I would add in one of the mobility days uh, from the mobility program. I think that would benefit you. The, the most of everything that we have, I'd say that would probably be the best program as far as, do you have any of our maps programs, by the way? No, I only know from listening to you guys, I haven't really explored on the website and stuff. Okay. So this is interesting. I, I guess I was trying to take the approach of like doing a little bit more often, but climbing is not a little bit. So yeah. uh, it makes sense. Maybe, maybe cutting down to climbing two days a week and just do a, a real uh, strength training day. Well, I mean, look, if, if you want to get better at rock climbing, then I wouldn't go down to two days a week of rock climbing. I would just do less strength training. 
Yeah. Now, if you want to, if you want to balance the two, and I want to build, I'm more interested stuff. in the balance at this point. Okay. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'll get to the point where I really want to go in so then, on the rock climbing. It, but at this point, I just want to stay so, more balanced. So two and two. That's so, it. So two and two. Yeah, two days. So now go two days of the performance program I'm talking about, mm-hmm. and two days of climbing, and that's a, that's yeah. a nice regimen right there. And by the way, two days of full body good programming. Uh, you're you're gonna build some strength. Yeah, you're you're fine. gonna build some great yeah. muscle yeah. and. Uh, you know, you're you're still doing now your pay passion. A, pay attention to all the to the pulling movements in the in the workouts. I would go mm-hmm. like moderate intensity at most because you're just doing yeah. so much pulling, mm-hmm. so much grip and pull stuff that it, that'll be the place that you'll hurt yourself if you overdo it. For you, that'll that'll yeah. be the most likely. That makes a lot of sense. And all then, right, we'll send that over to you. Episode cool. uh, one thousand one hundred fifteen. Tommy That's, Caldwell. Yeah, you'll like. Right on. Yeah. You got it, man. man I, I wish I had more time. I'd, I'd want to talk to you about quantum mechanics. I'm <laughs> 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 oh, laughing myself a little bit. Listen, Isaac, <laughs> Isaac. School us, please. We, are, it, it, we already did talk about it in yeah. some <laughs> alternate universe. So. <laughs> it already <laughs> happened, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is the cat dead or alive? We don't know. <laughs> thanks, for uh, <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for calling in, man. All right. Take care. That's a That's a quantum quantum joke Schrodinger's cat. we all got that okay? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i know i feel like such a dick so, <laughs> <laughs> so the protons you yeah. know uh uh rock climbing is very interesting it's actually so i trained somebody who one guy it was only one guy but i remember him because he walks in and talks to me about fitness and i couldn't help but notice like his, like how his body was built. He had this oh, crazy looking huge forearms. Huge forearms, yeah, yeah, just real lean physique. Yeah, and his yeah. Gr- and his hand and his hands looked all like gnarly, yeah, like and muscular fingers. fingers. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. like as soon as he comes in, he's asking me about workouts. I'm like, what do you do now? And he goes, yeah. oh, I'm a rock climber. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. There, there was a lot of that at the gym I was at that you guys came yeah, yeah. and visited me. Yeah, there's a lot of guys. Neil and all climbing. those guys. Neil, right? they were just they're just so strong and body weight ratio wise, uh, and they could do like one finger pull ups yep. and things like that. So. You know, there's crazy ways you can develop strength uh, uh, with rock climbing. So that's already super demanding. Yep. So, I mean, it's really just about reinforcing your other muscles to help contribute. You know, this this falls in line with what, what I think is the most popular question that we get on this, this show is this. How know, do I have everything? How do I balance yeah, it all? Right. I have this sport and they all kind of start off with the same thing. Like they have this passion for this sport, but then simultaneously they also want to build muscle and look a certain way. And it's just like. You know, something you just have to understand that something's got to give when you are when you are playing totally. a sport. Uh, nobody in any in any professional sport really gives a shit of uh, what they look like if it doesn't if it's not improving their performance. It's all about performance first. So you you, you just have to understand that there's a little bit of, of give and take. If you're going to put more energy and effort towards the way you look, you'll probably sacrifice a little bit of the sport. If you're uh, going to put all that into the sport, well, you're going to sacrifice a little bit of the physique. Yeah. But I but, think that- But at the end of the day, like, you know what the beauty is of finding something you're passionate about is you're probably going to be consistent. Right. You know, you'll be consistently active. Yeah. So, um, you, you know, the whole cake and eat it too, I mean, that really applies. Well, here. and to that point, you know, if you, uh, if you eat really well- and you have something like a sport like that you do, you're and you strength good. train one day a week, yeah, you're you're be, good. you'd be surprised how good of a physique that you could yeah, actually have. Totally. You're not going to go compete on a bodybuilding show, but you definitely will look like someone who lifts weights and looks really good. Totally. You know? Our next caller is Robert from Maryland. Robert, what's happening? How can we help you? What's up, guys? Uh, I just got to say, it's truly an honor to meet everyone and be on the show. Uh, I've been listening to you all on my way to work every day at uh, 4 a.m. since about February this year. Your podcast has really helped me uh, get my mind right before starting my shift. And you guys give me fun topics to talk about with my clients and also easier ways to explain uh, more complex issues. So huge thank you to each and every one of you for all that you do. Thank you. Thank you. Um, A little background on me. So I've been a personal trainer for about seven years now, uh, but started working, you know, a pretty successful full-time schedule starting about four years ago. Um, I recently made the transition from a super slow time under tension protocol, which is like a 10 second positive, 10 second negative Arthur Jones style gym, um, where we can only do super slow training on machines with our clients. I think uh, Sal mentioned the scenario to do the style of training, you know, maybe 10, 20 episodes ago. Um, But I transitioned to a new studio back in February where I'm uh, not limited as a practitioner. It can switch up the workouts, to create new stimuluses and get fast results with my clients. Um, while working at the previous studio, it was engraved in our heads to also train ourselves the same with the super slow as always our clients, which definitely makes the workout super intense 
gives us an incredible pump. However, due to the lack of variety in the training, I wasn't able to get, um, you know, great results after the first year. So I switched up my training back to my old bro split, which was the classic chest tries, uh, back buys and sometimes legs. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> once I started, uh, at the new position, I saw I was getting much better results doing to just doing a different workout, different stimulus. Um, then I found mind pump and the podcast and started actually bought aesthetic. And I got to say, um, you know, I'm pretty pleased with my results. Um, definitely been gaining some awesome gains. So appreciate that. Um, but anyways, uh, we recently hosted a deadlifting charity at my new studio and we had the neighbor, uh, the Navy, uh, powerlifting team and they came and crushed. And I watched these dudes pick up, I think the highest was like 675 pounds while being able, you know, around my body weight at 180 pounds. Wow. Um, they picked the weight lightning fast up with fantastic form. Um, so my question is how do I get out of this bodybuilding super slow mentality in my head that's been engraved in my head and move my body quickly like these power lifters? I know on the podcast you've talked about bodybuilding versus power lift or mentality, but how can I better make that switch? Mm. When I deadlift, it's hard to explode on the concentric no matter how light I make it. Yeah, good question. Mm -hmm. First off, where is this Arthur Jones gym? I didn't even know there was one that existed. So, um, the owner, I believe, trained under underneath a guy who studied under Arthur Jones um, and made this as a small business. Wow, um, so there is – I'm sorry. No, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I'm pretty sure the work – the places you were talking about um, on air was a place called The Perfect Workout, which is a little bit different, but which is kind of like the same thing. I don't know if you heard of that. I've actually, there used to be called a super slow zone. Super so, slow zone is the yeah. name of the one that I'm referring to. Yeah. So, yeah. so okay. there, there was one called that and I actually had a Silver client, Creek, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. I had a client that worked over there and it was exactly this. It was the, 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 the 10 second, 10 second protocol. Uh, and I don't know if it's, I don't think it exists anymore, but it was there for a couple of years. So Arthur Jones was pivotal in the bodybuilding world. He's one of the, uh, the inventors of Nautilus equipment. Um, you know, his famous Colorado experiment with Casey Viator and, you know, um, you know, he, Mike Menser, you know, Dorian Yates, like these were guys that were influenced by him. The problem is, is what often happens in our space is, is people find Arthur Jones was a scientist, right? They'll find something. That works, and that's the button they hit all the time. And they ignore the fact that the body responds well to different stimulus, to novelty, and that there's value in, in lots of different training styles. Now, powerlifting isn't necessarily a fast lifting sport. It's still a slow grind. They're not trying to lift it slow. It's just heavy. If you want to train explosively, uh, you need to do more Olympic. athletic training. Or Olympic lifting. Yeah, yeah, Olympic lifting would be the strength training style, I would say. But the problem with that is it's super technical. So it's going to take you a while to learn how to do lifts. Right. But I, the program I think you should follow that will help you is math performance. Mm -hmm. I think math performance right. will get you out of that bodybuilding mentality better than MAPS powerlift would. I would go MAPS performance for a full cycle. There's an explosive phase in there as well. Mm -hmm. And that's going to really teach you to move your body differently. It's going to get you out of that mentality. And it's, it's, it's far enough from the bodybuilding space to where it's based off performance, where I think, you know, within a, a few weeks, you'll be fully ingrained in a completely different, you know, style of training and, and what that feels like. Oh, interesting. You would go that way. That's not where I would go. Um, cause I feel like we mess with tempos in that, which he already does, uh, with the long, the long, slow eccentric, uh, um, but it's explosive up. It's right. not 10 seconds down either. Yeah, I yeah, mean, that's that part's mainly a bit, phase one. I mean, I think, and, and he's also a guy that's going from that to more of a body bro split. I would go anabolic. I just think anabolic is the... The problem, so, uh, you know, the problem with anabolic with this is that, you know, because, Robert, because you you you're, you're st you feel like you're stuck in this, like, time under tension, feel right. the muscle, bodybuilding style of training, you can do strength training, uh, like powerlifting style training, but... It, because the loads are so high, you're not messing with speed as much, which I, is, I think with, with MAPS performance, it, we, we take you there eventually. Yeah. And it, then you it's are- It's much more movement focused. Yes. I, and I you are working I on speed. I understand where you're trying to go with that. Just mainly from like reinforcing, um, you know, your, your body's ability and awareness to, you know, be a little bit more 
stable in all different directions and, and move efficiently and effectively. And there are phases in it where we do just focus on the acceleration, uh, which is like speed power. So yeah. you do um, use weights, but very light weights. And we're, and we're just working on our control of the movement and really just the explosive uh, concentric so uh, I do think that that probably would apply well, and it does prep you up to that point. So to Adam's point of like the phase one is probably somewhat similar in terms of like the eccentric is, is we're messing with the tempo. So you are coming down slow, but you do have to, you know, focus on the acceleration out of the hole in, in terms of the squat. Uh, so that, um, you know, that, that might be a bit familiar, but the whole rest of the program is going to be pretty unfamiliar. If, if you've been focused on bodybuilding for a while. Yeah, I definitely see the value. I mean, the ideal prescription person, it's not often that we don't all agree on something uh, with the, with programming. I would go anabolic performance, then power lift in that order hmm. for I, I, to reap the benefits you guys are talking about with that. But I think switching him to a very traditional full body strength training routine from where he's at, he's going to see the greatest strength gains from that. Then you take him over to performance where he's movement focused and he gets the benefits you're talking about and then goes into power lift and gets to really start to express all that he's built in the previous six months. Yeah. it's a, I, Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I, could I, see, I, I could see that. That could be okay too. It's just to get out of that headspace that you're in the fastest performance, in my opinion, is going to, and I don't think you need to go through an anabolic to do that. Uh, well, I, that, so that to me is all you, the mental discipline. That's you know, it. That to me, that doesn't matter. You could follow any of the programs, and that's still going to be a challenge if you if you do that, right? So yeah. I think that you just you got to get away from. It. And then the episode you referred to is the episode to listen to. We went into great depth of comparing the mindset of a power. It's just a different. It's such a different feel. You have to train it. You know what I mean? Like I've taken bodybuilder types and had them try to do like a kettlebell swing. And it looks like an upright row reverse curl. And then I've taken yeah. athletes and put them on like bodybuilding style workouts. And they just, it's like they're, they're playing a sport while they're doing each lift. And it's, it, you know, for what you're trying to train for, the, both of those are wrong. So MAPS performance is just, it's so athletic minded. It's going to get you completely out of that bodybuilding mindset, that control, the time under tension, like with, with performance, time under tension is there so that you can control and get in the right position for an explosive positive, not because you're trying to feel it more in your quads or your glutes or whatever. So, but I, look, I tell you what, you know, you're, Adam's right. We don't often disagree. I don't necessarily think, you know, it's like one answer is super wrong. I, I think either way is going to be okay. So why don't we send you both programs, you lucky guy? Very, <laughs> very, very, very rarely does that ever happen. It's like, yes. I'll send you oh, the ball you. best performance. We'll split you guys in half. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, thanks, guys. Wow. Yeah. You got it, man. Thanks for calling in, Robert. I appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. Yeah, it's a it's I mean, how many times have you guys seen that, right? Where like you got one person you're trained a particular way, and then they try and do an exercise that's like Yeah. It's like, oh, I could tell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't I you mean he try. referenced the right episode to listen to yes, because that's yeah. we that was the whole the main point of that that uh that episode that we did. And I you know, you could go either way, right? Like so if you guys did performance first, then go to anabolic, yeah. then power lift or flip the two, then you'd be okay. No matter what, he's gotta he's got to learn to think differently going into the weights, yes. regardless of of the Absolutely. program. But I think those two programs getting him ready to then go into power because if ultimate the ultimate goal is to get good at his deadlift or squat and stuff like that, this, that he's watching these guys do, like those are going to be. Yeah, good. and if acceleration really is the issue, like it's just so unfamiliar. I mean, mm -hmm. this is what I love about bands. And oh, yeah, like, yeah. But yeah. I mean, I didn't want to advise that because it's an advanced technique yeah. uh, to then apply. So yep. to go through the program first and, and work on those skills and develop those, but then, you know, the icing on the cake is to really kind of add those bands to a lot of those barbell movements. It really helps. And people don't realize this, like – Moving a weight fast, first off, requires a good level of skill and control. But moving a light weight fast activates your fast twitch muscle yeah. fibers, like moving a totally heavy weight response. slow. But, but my point is, like, I could deadlift, let's say I could deadlift 550 pounds. That's my max rep, right? Or that's a heavy one rep for me. I'm activating a lot of muscle fibers. I could put 315 on the bar and just through sheer trying to move it as fast as possible, getting in the right position and exploding up, I'll activate my muscle fibers in a very similar way. Or I could take that weight and move hella slow. Yeah. So they all they all got tremendous value, but it's such a different feel. It feels so different to go from one to the other to the other. Yeah. Our next caller is Cam from Massachusetts. Cam, what's happening? How can we help you? Uh, hey, uh, so uh, my question is, what does it mean to create tension within a muscle? 
Um, and I asked that because I saw Adam post a video a while back of Ben Pakulski saying to uh, create tension in the muscle first and then lift the weight. Um, but I was just act- I was wondering like what that actually means and how you do that and how you make sure the tension and control is in the target muscle rather than like just moving the weight around. Yeah, cool question. That's good. Mm. Well, you, we can practice right now, Cam. Yeah. So contract. Take, do me a favor. Muscle. Take your right arm and extend it out, kind of like this. Yep. Can you see me? Okay. Can you flex your bicep without curling your arm? Can you make your bicep okay. like you're going to try and flex? Yep. Okay, that's tension in your bicep. So when you get into a lift, create the tension or try to. This is not easy on some muscles, so it's hard for like the lats, the rhomboids. Could be chest, hard for can your chest. Bar. But try to flex that muscle. And then go into the exercise and try to connect to that muscle. One of the easiest ways for me to teach this is actual, actually on the negative portion of an exercise. So let's say like like Sal mentioned, like the chest is one of those harder ones. Not, not everybody can be get ready to do a bench press and then flex the chest. Now, maybe you can. If you can, that's fine. But what I'll, a lot of times I'll do is on the way down is I would be telling a client to be spotting the bar and being like, okay, feel it in your chest, resist in your chest, resist in your chest. Okay, keep that tension there and then go back up. So on the way down or on the negative of an exercise, really think about resisting with that muscle. That'll help keep that tension when you go back the the other direction. Does that yeah. make sense? Yep. Yeah, and you know, slowing the reps down, holding a squeeze, like all these things will help. And as you become more experienced, your ability to connect to muscles will just get better to the point where, you know, I could, I could connect to pretty much any muscle in my body, you know, sitting here if I wanted to. Um, and that's just through years and years of practice. So give it some time. And this is just as important when you learn how to brace and be able to support your spine, especially when you're loading your squat substantially to be able to brace first and make sure you maintain that tension there in your core, even as you drop down, but still be able to go through the movements. So that way, you know, you're not resting on your joints you're actually like keeping those muscles involved. such a good point just one of one of the biggest things uh, that helped my my deadlift and squat strength go up was learning to really create that tension in my core before i came out of the hole on a squat like bracing it. yeah learning to really break create all that inner tension like that to create a rigid spine all of a sudden i saw my weight go dramatically go up so that is yeah. the performance great. enhancement too so there's you know multiple benefits to it are you following any of our programs cam uh, i'm not at the moment okay so i'm going to send you maps prime pro just because it's uh there's mo- mobility movements in there but throughout the mobility movements you have to connect to different portions of your of different ranges of motion. So watch the videos carefully, see what we're teaching in them, and that'll help you learn how to connect with different muscles in actually in a, in a really, really good way. In fact, a lot of people think, oh, it just improves mobility. No, no, no. You are improving connection to different muscles. So I'm gonna send you Maps Prime Pro. And then after that, if you want to follow a, a workout program, I think Anabolic. Maps Symmetry. Oh, Symmetry even. Sym- yeah, well, Symmetry starts with No, no, you're good to yeah. I like sy- Symmetry first and then Anabolic, I would yeah. go. Yeah. yeah, so I'll send you over Maps Prime Pro for free. Awesome. Thank you. You got it, man. Thanks for calling in. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. No, no problem. Yeah. This is a, this is a tough one when you first get started, mm-hmm. especially for like, like back muscles and chest and like mm-hmm. people just don't know how to feel. Certain no. Areas. Well, they, well, I think too, you, you observe somebody doing an exercise, but you don't really understand how to feel your way through it and, yeah. and properly kind of support uh, you know, certain areas of your body and joints as you're doing these movements, yep. that takes some time to really understand like how to feel your way through it. Well, this is all all resistance training really is, is totally. flexion of the muscles with some sort of resistance. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's all resistance training is. So then the beginning of that is, you know, flexion of the muscle, learning how to flex the muscle is so, so paramount to the success that you'll have from lifting the weights. You know, this is another thing when you talk about like Ben Pokolsky and bodybuilders, and I, I think we've talked about on the show before, uh, the the value of the the flexing and the posing that they do in between yeah. sets. I mean, obviously they are- It doing, looks like it's a bunch of vanity. And, yeah, but yeah. It, but no, there's value. There's tremendous value in learning. How, and like you said to him that, I mean, I could sit here in this chair and you could call upon a muscle and I could activate it right yeah. now. And so getting to a place where you can do that has tremendous value because then when you go into an exercise, you can do any exercise. It could be the first time you did it, but if you know what muscle it's for, you know how to think about that before you even go into the movement. You'll see how much better you perform it, and you'll see how much better the results are from it. Our next caller is Bruce from Texas. Bruce, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, guys. How are you doing? Good. Uh, good. Really 
appreciate your time and, and everything that y'all do. I, uh, real responsive too. I just sent in my question two days ago. So I got here real, real fast. So props to your team awesome, on awesome. all that. Um, had a question about uh, your new uh, 15 minute maps program. Mm -hmm. And specifically my question was, um, you know, I, I, I'm just coming off doing anabolic, which had the trigger sessions. And then I did aesthetic uh, where, you know, during that time I incorporated some of the occlusion training. And I was just wondering if with the 15 minute program, even though you're lifting every day, if you guys would recommend um, incorporating any of those uh, as well during the 15 minute program, I felt like there was, I could feel the benefit of those doing the others. And so, but at the same time, as you guys kind of wisely pointed out in the build up to this new program of there's going to be that tendency to want to add stuff on because you feel like you can do more after just 15 minutes and I don't want to trip into overtraining. So I was just wondering if you guys had any advice on that. Good, good question. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. I, and I actually, I like where you're thinking uh, with the trigger sessions. That is something that I would allow a client to add on days, let's say when you can grab the bands and throw an extra two or three times of the, because trigger sessions are, are more designed to facilitate recovery than they are. They're so low much, to moderate stress. Really. Yeah. Very, very, very low to moderate. So I wouldn't mm -hmm. recommend you going and doing like say focus sessions, like from aesthetic where they're, they're more weight bearing and you're, you're more likely to do more damage than you are by just getting a little pump with the band. So yeah, I mean, I would totally green light yeah. it for you if you want. And the to. risk of overtraining is the lowest uh, with maps 15 right. versus other programs. Mm -hmm. So you could, and I know I'm going to kick myself for saying this. Now people watching this will be like, Oh, I added <laughs> maps to it. Yeah. I added, I know. Um, but you could add, you could do like one or two days a week of, uh, you know, a five minute occlusion because one set of occlusion is like five minutes. So you mm -hmm. can pick like a body part you really want to focus on and throw that in once or twice a week and you'll probably be okay. Before, before 15, you did, you said you did anabolic, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm kind of your typical, skinny guy uh i don't know what's the hundred dollar word ectomorph yeah mm -hmm. hard gainer. uh <laughs> and so i got your skinny guy bundle and so i did anabolic that and then it went into uh, aesthetic and so i was just finishing up aesthetic when this came out thought it was perfect timing so i thought i thought i'd try it out yeah no just throw i would throw that uh occlusion you could throw in once or twice a week trigger sessions kind of whenever you feel like because they're more mm -hmm. recuperative than anything and then i think uh you would do really do you have map symmetry uh, no, I don't. I like map symmetry and map strong, uh, for you. Uh, yeah, absolutely. But let me send you symmetry. I think that'll be a great program for you to follow yeah, this up Yeah, that'd be great. With. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. And by the way, I feel like, I, I feel like you're about to represent me in like some kind of like, uh, <laughs> yeah, in the you're court legal or something like that. Are you a lawyer? I know your, your guy mentioned that. I'm just, I'm at work and so I'm just hopping on this, uh, from work, but I am a lawyer. So you, you, uh, <laughs> I'm good you to know put it out quickly, mm -hmm. <laughs> but so uh, on the last kind of follow up is. I noticed on your call you had with that dad that just had a baby Yeah, on your most recent one. And you guys were talking about the 15 minute um, program kind of more in terms of maintenance of, you know, for where he was at, just trying to get something in each day. And I just wanted to make sure that, you know, but followed properly, you know, through the whole three phases of the program that you guys would consider the 15 minute maps program, you know, the same that you would for anabolic and the others that it is, you know, it's a, it's a muscle building program as well, not just maintenance. Yeah. Or would you consider it more maintenance? All, no, no, no. All programs that we design are designed to improve uh, muscle strength, endurance, right? Depends on the, the, which program, which is going to be more focused on. The difference between you and that dad was he just had a baby and he's got no sleep and he's like, he's like burnt out. So for him, yeah. Uh, yeah, like that'll that'll help keep what he's got. Anything more than that, he's gonna burn himself out. Totally. Plus, we do have two different blueprints in there. So, like in terms of like you sticking with the more advanced one that yeah. has barbell lifts, I, th I would suggest that because you've already been through Absolutely. anabolic. Totally. So yeah, yeah that yeah. should pair nice. Is that the one you're following? Are you doing the advanced version or the or the? Yes. Oh, yeah. you're good. Yeah, you do that with what you're trying to do with the trigger sessions and inclusion. I think you're going to see great results from. It. In fact, yeah. I'd love to hear your results after you. Yeah, and then following it. up with symmetry is going to be phenomenal. And then after that, uh, strong I think would be an excellent follow up. I love okay. That. I love that order. Perfect. Awesome. Well, that's great, guys. I appreciate it. You got it. Thanks for calling in, Bruce. All right. Okay. Thanks, guys. No problem.
He did say he was a lawyer, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. Isn't that funny? How you, just, you could tell by looking. He's got the office and everything. <laughs> yeah. the oh, yeah. He's got the chair. He's got the lawyer chair. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's about to give me right some bad away. news. Well, <laughs> you got two options. So. Well, either way, we're losing money. Yeah. I can't wait to actually uh, hear, uh, you know, because we the program just got released. So it'll be a couple months when all the reviews really. I mean, yeah. obviously we have people that are doing their love it already. But it's like, I really like to hear it after it's been three months that everyone's had it and start to hear the different success stories from it. So I think we're going to get yeah. two types. We're already starting to see, by the way, we're starting to get messages and people are loving it. But I, th I think we're going to get two types of people. One, the person who's had trouble being consistent, mm -hmm. which I'm already seeing what they're saying. My God, well, that was our original avatar, yes. right? And yeah. then I'm so glad we, you know, added the the yeah. advanced version that uh, was kind of modeled after Adam's version. Yeah, right? and then the second one's that. I think yeah. people are going to comment and be like, "Yeah, I was advanced, and I didn't realize how overtrained I was, and I started doing this, and I'm really responding well, and I feel really, really great." Yep. That's, I think, what we're going to get. Those are the ones I'm most interested in because yeah, that same. was that that surprised me. Totally. Right? It's not that often that I think we get surprised with exactly. like programming or exercise stuff. Like, so for me to get surprised, like, I'm really curious to see how many other people might have been in a similar boat. Totally. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. You can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. I don't think I would ever get off the internet if I was a teenage boy. It's difficult already. You'd need uh, lots of uh, anti-chafing lotions. I, I, for at least, at least the first. I mean, year, we've all heard, our, we the, all hurt ourselves in the fucking. The 90s first when three, we had the first shit. three years of masturbation was to a little tiny like a school, one thing school photo that a girl gave me, and she had like a kind of a kind of a you low cut see, shirt. Uh, I masturbated to that for three years. Wow. Three years. That just goes to show. Imaginations were much better back in the day. They were. I mean, <laughs> well, I, there's a it, that doesn't even come skirt. close. It's, it's called way. innovation. That doesn't come close to my my Instagram fucking explore page. It's just like crazy to me. Yeah. yeah, you would never do that again. No, everything jiggles. And Which I wonder. <laughs> do you, so, do you think that the do you think this is kind of a podcast? Not the first part, but this part is but uh, it's a B roll, B roll, yeah, B roll. Do you think that? That kids don't get like boys don't get like the same like I that I had the the, the butterflies when that girl sat at you know a, a chair in front of me and I couldn't wait to talk to her in class I thought about it the whole the whole day like do you think that's like taken away now for guys a little bit yeah I, I they've already shown that oh they have yeah that's yeah they've shown that because the um, mystery's gone huh yeah because part of the one of the big um, you guys know this as, as young men it's a huge ego risk. To approach a girl. Yeah. So the cost is embarrassment and you feel like a dork. Outcast. and you, Oh my gosh. She said no to me. Oh, when you're especially a young man that like crushes your fragile ego. Yeah. But what motivates you to so take that, that crazy character. risk. Yeah. It's the chance. The one in a hundred chance. Yeah. You're like, you're like, you're like, cause all you have at home <laughs> is one picture that you use for Maybe you years. catch <laughs> them on, yeah. Yeah. maybe catch them on an off day. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So you're willing to take Maybe that today. risk. Like, like, yes. Yeah. You're willing to take that risk. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh, so shoot your shot, it. dude. Let's Science. See. It's interesting. So who do you think is, who do you think is more at risk? Uh, or who is going to be impacted the most? I would say your son, Aurelius or your son, Domenico with what? Just like how socially impacted these kids are. Do you think that, I have no idea what with like, my youngest, because I don't know what that's going to look like. I know, but I can't I, even begin to imagine. Yeah, but I see. So I speculate that actually Aurelius and Max are going to be okay. I actually think that Justin's going to have some of the hardest time because yeah. I think that your boys are in the the kind of prime year still in the thick of all this weird shit, bro. What if they make it so in, engaging, interacting to like yeah. go into it? Then that'll impact our, our youngest even more. Yeah, but I think they're. I think they are. But I think that there's already seems to be this kind of division of people that don't want it and. I, that are that are already starting to learn about the negatives. Just five years ago, nobody was talking about the negatives of all that stuff. That's literally just happened. Yeah, in the last five years. So there's now people. I, there's more people cautious about the internet and YouTube and their kids looking at Instagram today I mean, than there maybe, was just five right? years. Don't or you think so? Maybe. Or there could be just technology that's so new that we re hit the re reset button in terms of oh, this seems okay. And it'll take us five years to figure that out. Oh, I. You know I, what I mean? Because I don't know what's going to look like. Who knows? What's I, I know look like. none of us do. It's me. It's me speculating and guessing with you guys. Like, do you think that 
you know, Domenico is going to have a hard time or say Justin's boys, or do you think I don't know Aurelius and Maximus? Hmm. I don't know. It's tough. Good question. Yeah, That's tough. Know. Yeah, I mean, it's awkward. I could tell that uh, the interactions are especially from just the socially distant stuff and like the way that they hang out with their friends on their iPads and whatnot. It's like a different culture completely different culture than, than what we grew up with. So yeah. the interactions are different. Um, the way that uh, they talk about girls a little bit different. Like I think there's a lot less interest like from what I see so far from what well, I was okay, growing up. Like yeah. I was okay. Like, so that where's the girls. That's the point that I was making by the like, so I had this like infatuation with that girl because right. she was in my class and it was all that I had this little, she gave me a, that was a big deal. She, you know, yeah. remember uh, when you got school photos, you only had like, 12 wallets that you got. So if you got a hot girl's wallet, oh, yeah. that but was that like Owen Mill pick. You know, bro, I, I still, I think gold. I still have those saved. I do have those in a box That's somewhere from my high school. <laughs> should say that after you told us earlier. <laughs> and, some, <laughs> and some strands of hair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm serious. So Adam's a did collector. You guys, did that? Did, <laughs> <laughs> she, she lost a tooth. <laughs> I have that too. A couple dirty Some socks. girl's retainer. That she blew her nose out of tissue. I saved it. Yeah. She just hung out. It's like a retainer. Okay. So you guys didn't do that? You guys didn't? You, that wasn't a thing when you were in high school? Yeah, everybody. Of yeah, yeah. We all grew up at the same time. Okay. Well, so then you guys did do that then. Yeah. yeah. Like that was a bit. So my, I, I still have this. I will bring it for you guys. This will be a funny conversation. Be funny. I still have, you know, the wallet, uh, the little old school plastic inserts yeah, 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 where you yeah, put yeah, photos. Yeah. yeah. I still have one from high school. No way. I yeah. see. I got rid of that a long time. So I got, a, you know, I just have a box of stuff that I've never really done anything with it, but I've kept it since then. Yeah. And I still, and I'll bring it in. And the whole thing is nothing but girls that wow. I went to school with, you know, that were my girlfriends or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But then I got one of their wallet photos. That was like a big deal. <laughs> And like, if you were a dude, I could you, just see you, you. I could see you flexing back in the day. That was a flex. You Did you put them in order? Bro, that's like oh, yeah. yeah, they fall out like <laughs> Did all you the. Put them in order of like uh, yes, number one, yes, number bro, two, number three, hundred <laughs> percent. I'm bringing it. In, I'm bringing it in so you guys can see it. All right. I still. I know. I still uh, have it. The right. trees would get pissed yeah, at me. Starting let me squad. Let me do oh, this fit oh, tip. Yeah. This one's really important, and that is to phase your training. If somebody trains for a full year doing a bench press and they're always aiming for five reps, if you compared that person to a person who did bench press where they did three or four weeks of five reps, but then they did three or four weeks of 12 reps, and then three or four weeks of, let's say, 15 to 20 reps, and then they'll throw in some supersets, at the end of that year, you're going to see more consistent progress from the person who's moving in and out, and less injury. That's another yeah. thing. You'll see less injury as well.